was just telling someone the other day that I have been since last week, Tuesday, after I got my college age students, daughters back uh, home, uh, I was telling them that I haven't left the house since then. Um, and it got me to pause to think about what it would be like and what it has been like to actually have my daughters back uh, in the house after being newly uh, empty nesters for it's five months. Um, so here was the, the preliminary stuff. Um, one was that uh, I had to think about the new rhythm that my husband and I had gotten into. And, and then we had all their stuff come back into the house. So that was the first thing, it was just stuff being in the house. So that stuff being in the house actually ended up um, affecting the way in which we moved around the house. So I was stepping over stuff and bumping into stuff. And that was just the stuff that didn't have two legs and two arms, a head and a mouth to talk back to me. Uh, and so that was quite an adjustment. Um, and then it started getting me to think about how the flow of our household uh, was changing. Um, it went from having clear pathways to certain things and seeing stuff that I had left one place was now at a, in a situation where stuff was not being left where I had put it. Um, there were no clear pathways to things. Uh, so just from a, um, I guess every, every house has their, their specific pathway to get to the bathroom, the kitchen, the bedrooms. Um, that was now having to flow differently. And I realized that whereas I had missed them while they were gone, while they were here and have been here, um, it's actually, for lack of a better word, <clears throat> maybe have to readjust my mojo <laughs> as to how I get things done in the house. And it got me to thinking about all of you moms out there who are um, having to either work from home or maybe you're not working anymore um, or you have been home but things are now, you have no options for going out to different places that you used to. It got me thinking about how as moms, uh, we have so much to juggle and uh, balance and these times now uh, we have to consider our safety, the safety of the people in our family who we're exposed to, who we're not. Um, and I just thought, okay, what does this remind me of? It reminded me of, and it reminds me of when as a mom of multiples, I was home uh, when my husband was out. Uh, I was home, uh, limited to uh, the confines of the house that we were living in at the time. And um, at the time that I had our daughters, I was, um, well, through my pregnancy, I was in my fourth year of my doctoral program. I was working two part-time jobs. Um, I, uh, to make ends meet and pay for my education. And um, I was also in the process of collecting data for my dissertation. Um, and um, for any of those, any of you who know what a dissertation involves or don't, don't know what a dissertation involves, I mean, if you're doing any substantive research, which I was, you have to collect data, you have to put things together, you have to go out and get subjects and, and test them and all that other kind of stuff. Uh, it was just a, a feat in and of itself. And I was actually um, doing that 
across four different universities. Um, so there was a lot going on. So again, I had two part-time jobs. I was pregnant. I was six months pregnant at the time with twins. Um, I was working on my dissertation. And on top of that, I was taking the last class for my doctoral program. Um, and all in the span of four months, that's what was going on. And it was a very um, trying time, <clears throat> but it was a time where I really had to think about and implement what I needed to do organizationally to keep things moving. Um, and so I worked out a schedule. Uh, and in that schedule, I had to uh, really plan time for me to have me time. And the me time had to end up being not the ex ex extravagant things like going out to the movies or going out to dinner, which I know we can't do per se here now in this sequestered time with COVID and everything. But back then, I had to narrow it down to, okay, can I get a, 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 a tub, a small tub, and fill it with hot water and Epsom salt to soak my feet? That became me time. Or could I uh, put on a CD player and play a particular CD and listen to my favorite song five times in a row? That became my me time. Um, and so that I had a good rhythm that was going with that uh, for those four months. But then after our daughters were born um, and after, you know, my husband, you know, he had his two weeks off to be able to, you know, spend time with me and help me. But then when he went back to work, whoa, it was just me and my girls. And um, that put a new challenge on things because when they were born, I had to get ready to defend my dissertation, which means I had to actually analyze all the data, finish writing up the dissertation, um, finish um, figuring out how I was going to go back to work. Um, and, uh, that was a lot <laughs> because there were two of them at the same time during the day. Um, and so I had to figure out how to have a new rhythm for my time with the stuff I had to do and the stuff that was near and dear to my heart, my daughters and taking care of them. And so um, that new rhythm uh, involved talking to friends who had kids and getting their input on things that may be of help to me. Uh, it involved uh, actually trying out implementing those things and some of the stuff that they would suggest to me didn't work. I had to toss it. <laughs> Some things I actually had to rejigger to fit the rhythm, such as, um, you know, as moms, you know, when you have kids, there are points in time where your music that you may or may not listen to, sorry, the music that they, you know, kids' music, you know what I'm talking about, all the little songs they sing, got to play that stuff for them. But then sometimes you just want to listen to your own music. So I had to find ways in which to um, have my own personal tune out to tune into me time where I was listening to stuff I liked while they got to listen to the stuff they liked. And then I had to figure out, okay, how can I then structure the time so that they would have a natural rhythm of their own? So um, in that sequestered time that I had with them, I had to make sure that I was consistently uh, making sure that they were on a schedule. 
So it wasn't, it went beyond just, you know, when they wake up, I'd feed them, et cetera. But then after the feeding is done, then what? And that's where I started getting creative about how to actually have, uh, how to make the time and the interaction, even though it was structured, time that was relational. But the relational time had to have its limits because there was still stuff I had to get done. So I had to instruct them as young as they were, um, even especially when they reached the, the three-year-old to um, five-year-old age, I had to instruct them to have their own free playtime. And I would talk to them in age-appropriate ways to say, okay, you guys are over here now, stay there and play with each other or play with whatever it is that they had in terms of toys or cardboard boxes. I'm really big on cardboard boxes. It's amazing what can happen with cardboard boxes. Kids get really creative with cardboard boxes and mine did. Um, and so you stay over there and I would do it in small chunks so that I could then spend time doing the stuff that I needed to do. And it really forced me to be more productive in the shorter periods of spurts of time that I had. So as I'm thinking about, um, you know, moms who may be out there, really putting forth a structured plan for how it is you want the new flow to happen. And if you have kids who are uh, older, uh, elementary school age, tweens, teens, even college age, really having a family meeting about what it is that you're envisioning, but then also get their input on what they think may be doable for them. So uh, when it comes to structuring the time on, uh, you know, homework or uh, free time within the confines of a house or uh, limited neighborhood exposure, um, you might want to definitely make sure that they're giving you their input on what it is they think can be doable. Because when you come into an agreement about stuff, you'd be surprised the ideas and suggestions that they might have might be things you never thought of, but you're actually now engaging them in a way that will give them opportunity to use that other part of their brain that creative side to give input, to contribute in a new kind of way, in a new kind of productive way. Um, so definitely uh, during this time, have some time of establishing some structure. Um, and then <clears throat> what you wanna make sure that you do is you want to um, hone in on uh, finding ways for them to be involved in the day-to-day -day tasks. Uh, so if you have little kids, um, and I know moms, you're out there, wake up in the morning, make your bed. <clears throat> or if it's, uh, you know, whether it's making their bed or say they're young, they're really young, make a game out of it, making their bed, who can make their bed the neatest? Um, whether it's uh, who can get the cereal boxes out of the cabinet, uh, you know, and pour themselves a bowl, you know, just really en enabling them to in uh, operate on their own more independently is a, a skill that will have different permutations as they get older. So, you know, if you have young ones, really just amping it up and saying, hey, you're you're such a big boy or girl, uh, you can do this and have them do it. It might not be done exactly the way that you would want them to, but at least they're trying, they're in there swinging and you applaud them and you encourage them in their efforts. If they're older, then um, definitely uh, assigning them stuff and then um, giving them input letting them give you input onto how they would like to reward themselves for accomplishing or doing the thing that you've assigned them to do. 
uh, would be helpful in the discussion that you guys have. If they're college age, like mine are, uh, they already know my penchant for um, the dishes being done. And actually last night, <clears throat> my youngest said she was, she went to the kitchen sink. I saw her, I was watching TV. And next thing you know, I hear her go, oh my goodness. Who is not scrape? The dishwasher does not clean the dishes. You have to scrape it. And she actually sounded like me four years ago. <laughs> okay. Um, and so we had a discussion about what it was that she was frustrated with. And um, we kind of went back and forth where I said, so who do you think is not scrubbing off the plates? She's like, I'm not telling. And I'm like, well, do you think it was me? She's like, no, it's not you. And she went down the list. And, um, and so when, when she wouldn't out whoever it was who is not scrubbing the dishes, I said, well, why don't we have a family meeting so we can talk about this so that the dishes get put in the dishwasher in such a way that they will be cleaned properly. Um, but it was really kind of neat to see uh, that I didn't even actually have to ask her to do this. Um, because life has taught her, having been away for a semester at school, what cleanliness, what the pros are for keeping things uh, clean and in order uh, can be. And when you live with someone who is not that way, <laughs> what that can be. So, um, so then, so in, in, so in terms of involvement, that's the second thing that uh, I'd encourage you to just look for ways to have your children involved in the process of figuring out different tasks and assignments so that you're not having to do everything. That's the end goal, moms, right? So that you're not having to, having to do everything because we as moms have a lot on our plate. And then lastly, uh, community uh, is gonna be really important to um, develop. Uh, within your family at this point. Um, it sounds like an oxymoron to, to say community when you guys are all together more often than usual. Um, and so that might seem like an oxymoron type of statement to make, but uh, community, uh, a communal type of uh, thing is, is more about how can we as moms um, uh, readjust our expectations about what connection is really all about. Do we really have to be interacting with our kids all the time in order to have connection? Think about it. Or can we respect that we each need space and in respecting the space that we give each other that actually connection is formed. So just think about that. Um, and so when you're looking at time spent together in a communal way with your family, um, think about it differently. Um, that if you plan to have pizza time with your family and someone forgets the sauce or someone broke a jar because <laughs> it fell, or you realize you didn't have all the ingredients, or someone didn't like that topping, and it seems to be chaotic, well, just step back for a moment and think, hmm, could this be an opportunity to maybe connect differently? That even though the plans might not have gone the way you thought they ought to go, for your connection time. Maybe there's information that you are now privy to about the different people in your family that may give you more insight on how to connect more effectively with them. So just some thoughts. Again, implement some structure. Uh, Look for ways to have your family involved in the different tasks. And then rethink how you think about communally connecting with each other. I would love for you to comment 
uh, in the section um, if there are things that you would like to see that you're not seeing or would like to discuss. Um, I want to make myself available to you for this to be a forum for you to um, express whatever's going on, um, however you feel comfortable uh, at this point. So I want it to, to be a time where, where it's not just me doing the talking. I want to hear from you. Okay, I'm here. I'm listening. Uh, I want you to have the space that you need for yourself. And if this is 15 minutes that you can have for yourself, so be it. I want to be here for you. Uh, thanks uh, for joining me now. Um, if there are things you want to see me cover in subsequent days uh, during this time, please leave a comment in the comment box. Or you can uh, DM me, I think is what they call it, or IM me. Um, and I will definitely make sure to cover that. All right. Until next time, this is Dr. Deering. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye.